Hi everyone, Anita here. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to the Winterween Readathon. I'm so excited to actually be reading this year and to have some spooky books be the first set of books I will be reading this year is pretty exciting. So before I get into why I am excited, this readathon is hosted by Gabby Reads and Olivia Reads a Latte. The information and all that kind of stuff will be down in the description down below if you want to check that out, as well as my TBR. So you would know that I'll be reading three books. First one being Stolen Tongues, Night of the Mannequins, and Follow Me to the Ground. Those are the three if you want to know what they are. Like I said, my TBR video for January will be in the description down below. The reason why I am excited is because it's horror. I've seen a lot of horror movies and the fact I have not easily branched out into horror books is surprising because I do mainly read fantasy but it is quite surprising that I just haven't branched out into or eased my way into reading horror books. I have read some Stephen King, so that is some sort of horror books I have read. I just have not read a lot. So having this readathon in which I read a whole bunch of horror books excites me a bit. And it also another part that's really exciting as well is will I be scared reading these books? I have no idea because I do want to try reading some of these books in the dark which could scare me, especially Stolen Tongues, because I've heard that one is pretty creepy. But there's something just creepy about mannequins as well. I'm excited for it. I'm excited to see if horror is going to be my genre in book format, because I really enjoy it in movie format. And I have finished talking, I hope. So I will see you soon when I have read more and when I know what my thoughts and feelings are about Stolen Tongues. So I'll see you then. Wish me luck. It's lights out, baby. Okay, excuse the harsh lighting, but if I were to do this, it would not look nice. Ugh, bright. I just read it like completely in the dark and god damn that was a good prologue like that was such a good prologue I'm invested already and I actually have the kindle app on my ipad and it says I have six hours and two minutes left but I am taking my time I've just like stopped reading them up to part one now I'm very interested very curious to see what's going to happen now and like we know the spooky parts we know what's going to happen but is the spooky part of the first one, like, the only spooky part we're going to see? Like, it's very interesting. It opens up to a couple who are taking care of these pets for a friend. And the animals kind of start acting a little weird, especially the bird. The bird starts to act differently pretty much straight away. And it's, did, Col did the couple, Colin and Gabriella, who were the ones that were away, were they the ones... Like, did they have troubles before with this? Or is it only um, Felix? Which, okay, okay. So, I think we're following the main character, Felix, who was the same author, who is the author of this book, Stolen Tongues. That's odd. I don't know what's going on there, but yeah, is it only happened to Felix? Or is this actually happening to Colin and Gabriella as well, which is the owners of this cabin in the woods with these dogs and Felix? is the one that took care of the animals with his girlfriend. So is it only happening, is it just happening to Felix? Or is it happening to Colin and Gabriella, like I keep saying? Mm, very interesting. I'm very, very intrigued right now. As far as I know, these next chapters are going to be short. And I don't know if we are actually going to see, like, a monster. And I don't know if you can see, but if you can see, like, a blind, my bed is, like, literally... See? My bed is, like, literally, like, under a window, so... <laughs> Nothing better be tapping my window at night, I tell you, I would shit the bed. <laughs> so, so, yeah. I'm going to get to a reading now, but with the light on because I don't want to hurt my eyes, not because of the spookiness, I just don't want to hurt my eyes. That is what I'm going to do, so I'll update you when I have read more. It is around 12 o'clock now, so it's midnight, and the and the book is really good. Like, the book is really, really good. 
There's definitely creepy elements and it does seem to take place in the winter. I wonder if it has anything to do with Native Americans. Like, because it has mentioned Native Americans before in this book a couple of times. And something to do with curses and dream catchers. I don't entirely know what dream catchers do. But don't dream catchers, like, catch bad nightmares or bad dreams or something like that? That's what I always thought. I could be wrong. But it's just very fascinating to read about and it's good so far. I wonder how it's going to end. Like, are we going to know what this creature is? If it, if it, if bleh, even if it is a creature? Like, if it even is? Oh, for goodness sake, you can't have till it's midnight. Even if it is a creature at all, are we going to know? Or does Indian, like Native American Indian folklore, have something to do with it. I'm not entirely sure. But it's very good so far. I'm really enjoying it. It's quite atmospheric. Uh, it's not as scary as I was hoping. But we'll see how I go at night tonight when I fall asleep. So yeah, that's just my thoughts so far. She is talking back to this. Like, Faye is the fiancé to Felix. So she is, like, talking back to this creature. And this creature has, like, um different voices. And the fiancé is talking back to this creature or this thing that is outside their cabin um, that they were, they're in the cabin for like a romantic getaway. And like, like I'm saying, there's this shadowy figure just, just standing there and there's this, the shadowy figure, their voice is like carried through the wind to, to the fiancé and she's talking back to it. Meanwhile, Felix is just thinking, oh, she's just mumbling in her sleep because the fiancé has sleeping problems. Like, um, she talks in her sleep, she sleeps, walks, sleep, walks. I really need to sleep. But there is definitely something going on here. And it's really good so far. So I might try and go to sleep. It does usually take me quite a while to fall asleep anyway. So... I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty tired, so I may just crash just like that. I don't know, I'll let you know how I go tomorrow. So I've done a little bit more thinking. I, ju I really just want to continue reading, but I know I really shouldn't. The thing I had thought about was, obviously it seems like the prologue stuff happened before all this recent stuff with the romantic getaway in the cabin that we're following from the present day of. Because I'm what I'm thinking to myself that it is moving pretty quickly, the spookiness of it. Like, I don't blame them. I'd be freaked out by some of the other stuff too. But I wonder if the events of the previous cabin, when they were still dating, is making them a little more on alert like they really haven't talked about it much they really haven't the cabin that they were looking after in the prologue that was their friends that was Felix's friend Colin's um cabin that they were looking after like um Felix and Faye that were looking after in the first one they haven't really mentioned it hasn't really been touched on. It's saying that, oh, this is like very similar to the situation that we are cur currently in now. Yeah, it, I understand why it would be. Like, it, it is fast moving and I do, I, I kind of enjoy that. But with horror, wouldn't you expect it to be a little bit more slower? To really marinate, I guess you could say, in that atmosphere of the horror. But I guess hearing a freaking noise outside your window, a noise you don't know what the hell is that also has different pitch in your vo in your vocal cords would be any would make you freak out and be terrified. So yeah, that's just my thoughts on that. I sh really I really should sleep even though I do want to read. But anyway, I'll see you tomorrow and I'll let you know what I did. <laughs> Hi, good morning. I survived the night. <laughs> I wake up just then. I just wake up and I'm just a little sleepy. The problem being with that, I was just so excited to read and I just wanted to read. And I was up for so long wanting to read that it took me forever to fall asleep. It's pretty normal for me f for 
need to take a while to fall asleep but then when I do fall asleep I usually wake up feeling pretty okay like I'm feeling a little better now like a little more awake but yeah it was good sleep can't complain <laughs> still not scary like it is creepy and there are def definitely elements that i'm just like okay a little creepy didn't know what's happening there but yeah it, it is a good book it is a good book but but i am only 50 pages into it so the scariness could ramp up and the fact that my furniture this you see that little duchess at the back there that little wardrobe little cupboard I was just about to fall asleep. It was like one o'clock-ish. I was just about to fall asleep. Crack. Like, you know when your furniture, when it's so humid that your furniture kind of swells and when it cools down, it kind of pops and makes that cracking sound? It, it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> it really did. It scared me. It was like, oh my god, what the hell was that? Because it was so loud. And because it hasn't happened for so long, only because now we've we've been getting fair bit of rain and it's been humid that the furniture's been swelling up a little bit and uh, just been cracking when it's cooled down so yeah <laughs> that was about it but i think i did sleep pretty good because now i'm a little more alert now and another thing as well i do work tuesday through to saturday in this reading readathon and it is all night time so i don't i'm hoping to get as much reading done as I can. I don't know how much I will get done. I will do my absolute best to get as much reading done as I possibly can. So in saying that, I'm going to go now and I'll update you when I actually have done some reading. So this reading thong, reading thong, God. So that this reading vlog won't take forever for me to edit. So I'm going to go now and... I'll see you later. So, goodbye for now. So, it is around uh, five past two now in the afternoon. I'm about to go to work very soon. But I'm around the 30% mark in Stolen Tongues. And the character's name, like the main character's name, is the same name as the author. I don't know if that's intentional or I don't know if that's just how he wants the story to be told. So that's a little weird, making me think, um, is this like something that actually happened to him? But it pro probably isn't. I want to do research on that because I want to see if there's actually any interviews about him talking about this book. And just, it's creepy. There are some really creepy things happening. And poor Faye, I feel sorry for her. It'd be terrible to be sleepwalking and sleep talking a lot in your dreams and stuff. It sounds horrifying to me, just not knowing what happens. Or what's happening to your body but this thing that is happening to them at the cabin so they're out of the cabin now they're not in the cabin they're back home in california and this thing is unrelenting this thing is following them home it has definitely it's comfortable with um fame like it just seems to like really grasp her and it's not really letting her go it does seem to have some sort of native american indian folklore which is very interesting well i don't know if it's like really folklore but it's got to do with native american indians so i'm wondering if there's like some sort of underlying reason why but it's very fascinating to know about the history of the cabin and it's really grim like it's really grim history that was Faye's parents cabin which was their friend's cabin and it's just the history of that it's probably under like or on top of some sort of um ancient native american burial grounds because i don't know if it's true or not but i heard if you build your house on top of a burial ground it's it'll be haunted i don't know if that's entirely true or if it's all fictionalized but that is just what i have heard so it, it is very good so far i'm thoroughly enjoying it it's definitely grasping my attention and it's a pretty easy pretty easy to read pretty accessible um, I'm going to eat now. I'm going to have a bit of a snack before I go to work. I do finish at 8 and hopefully I'll be able to read a bit more tonight. So I will give you an update when I have read more later on tonight. I've been home for a little while now. I've just finished reading. It's 10 to 12, like it's nearly midnight. And I'm around the halfway point in Stolen Tongues. And it's really good. I'm really enjoying it. Definitely like really creepy. 
And I was correct with it being like American Indian folklore. Sorry, Native American folklore. It's good. I'm really enjoying it. I don't know if it's really scary. Like I haven't read in the in the dark. I only did it for like a little bit. But if I were to read in the dark now, I would fall asleep. Nor do I want to hurt my eyes either. It's all going to depend on how good I sleep tonight, which I think I will sleep pretty good tonight. Yeah, it's very interesting in how like what this creature is, what it wants. It is it is pretty creepy. There has been some creepy elements of like if if you've seen horror movies where they are almost possessed in a way and their body does all this crazy contortionist kind of stuff. It's kind of like that. That was that was pretty creepy, I'm not gonna lie. That was that, that was something. And just this idea that someone is like looming over you. That's pretty creepy as well. So it is really good. It is really good. I think there's more to it though. Is there more to it? I don't know. There's something else going on. That just feels like there's something else more happening. Some sort of big secret or mystery. Like Felix wants to protect his fiance, Faye. But Faye kind of wants to protect him too. Because they had gone to a psychologist together for Faye. So he was there as like a support for her. And the doctor had said as the, oh my gosh, what's it called? Appointment was finished. He said, she's, you want to protect her and that's a really good thing. But she's protecting you as well. So what is she keeping a secret? Is this entity or whatever it is, how long has it been following her? Because she, her and her family have had that cabin for a very long time. So how long has it been following her? Because he keeps asking her these questions like, what is, what is he saying? What is he saying? Tell me. And she's like, she kind of remembers, but then she, but then he always tells her or makes her forget it. And there's something else back there. I think she remembers more than she's letting on, which is why she's having these nightmares, I think. So yeah, I think I'm onto a bit of a theory here, but we shall see. We shall see. I think there's more to it. I'm excited to continue reading this. It's a very good book and I'll definitely no, 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 blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I will definitely be doing more reading tomorrow. Hopefully I'll get this done by Thursday, hopefully, because it's Wednesday tomorrow. So maybe Thursday this will be done. But yeah, it's really good. Really, really enjoying it. So it's been a day or so since I have last updated you. It is now Thursday and I have come to tell you that I have finished A Stolen Tongues by Felix Blackwell. It is a really good book. I really liked it and yeah I really enjoyed it. Not scary. I, I, didn't, I didn't find it scary. Like I slept pretty much fine except for the first night but I was just I was just so captivated and I just wanted to read that was a bad night for me anyway I just could not sleep that night I think insomnia really hit me pretty bad like it hit me with a brick you know but yes very good it's definitely creepy atmospheric he's a good writer this Felix Blackwell he's a good writer and the fact that this is going to be optioned for a movie is making me excited because I kept thinking to myself, this could be a really damn good horror movie and, and I would watch the absolute shit out of it. And then next thing you know, I was editing my January TBR. Yes, I know it's late, but I was editing my January TBR. And I had said on that video that this was optioned for film. And I was like, ooh, interesting. So yes, it's very, very good. I like how the book deals a lot with Native American folklore or, or indigenous America, indigenous American folklore and history all that is very fascinating to me and I really like at the end of the book he has like the author writes about his experience with writing indigenous Americans or Native Americans and whether it's basically he was battling with himself about whether or not he should or shouldn't write about it about the culture of indigenous americans or native americans and i really really enjoyed that discussion that was really good i was i was thoroughly impressed by it and it made me go back to other footage and made me think oh my gosh did i say something but I do remember myself saying that, like, I may have heard misconceptions about these things. And if I have said something, I apologize if it offends you in any way. It kind of leaves it a bit open-ending. Like, 
The story is told of the story is good. I really enjoyed it. The relationships are good. I love the relationships. Relationships are really good. It's quite gruesome in some areas, which I don't mind. So definitely, definitely wanting to read more from this author. Writing is accessible, easy to follow, atmospheric, like I said. Very good time. Very, very good time. It is like just a little after midnight now. I don't think I will read any more. Uh, maybe I will, maybe I won't. I just don't know what to read now because this book is so good and I just want to let it sit and think about it for a little while. But yes, very, very good book. Hello, it is Saturday now. I am on to my second book and I'm actually a little over halfway through it. The second book that I have decided to read or that I am going to be reading, well, as you can tell, I told you I'm halfway through it, for Winterween is Follow Me to Grounds by Sue Rains Forward. Oh man, how do I explain my thoughts and feelings about this book? It's very, very difficult. Um, first of all, well, first of all, actually, did I say I did some yoga? I can't even fucking remember. No, I didn't, but I just did some yoga, like yoga mat, oops, yoga mat down here. So that's why I'm on the floor. I just finished. So that is why I'm on the floor. I have just finished. Follow Me to Ground is a very, 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 very weird book. It's so weird. It's definitely magical realism. I'm not really getting much horror out of it. And I looked at some other people's reviews and it was more to do with desire and like the darker side of desire and Samson kind of gave me red flags a bit with how him and Ada were first introduced to each other how they first met that just gave me fucking red flags it really did and considering the fact that um it had said in one of the reviews that he has a bit of an estranged or a bit of a weird strange well, no, it wasn't strange, like a oh, bit of a rough relationship or something like that with his sister. And I didn't realise they were orphans. I just feel like this book could have been better explained with certain things. I don't know. But yeah, and I when I read that, that he has a bit of a strange relationship with his sister, I thought, did he fuck her? And it kind of looks like he might have. And it, the, and it just kind of seems like you will... Like, you will happily disregard whatever it is, whatever's happening, whatever's in front of your face, all the information and the worries and stuff that people tell you about a person for desire. That's kind of what it seems like. This chick, Ada, who we're kind of following the point of view of, kind of in a way, she literally grows a vagina so she can experience pleasure. Like, this book is wild. This book is weird and wild. And it kind of, like... And drops you smack bang here it is here's everything well it doesn't even tell you anything you need to know it just no actually it does tell you eventually it does tell you well not who they are but how they came to be who they are ada and her father and what they do it is good it's just very weird and i really can't explain my thoughts this is going to be a very hard book for me to rate it's grotesque, it's quite gruesome with how they cure people, with how they help people with their sickness. It's a very fascinating world that this ground is what made them, well, is what actually made Ada. So it's like this entity, this being is like decades long, they've been living for decades and probably even centuries. And it's, it is all very fascinating, it really is really truly is when the book is describing how they take the sickness out of someone it's actually really quite gruesome and grotesque and perverse i wasn't expecting that i just thought oh my god is it ant yeah i just thought oh yeah okay whatever like when they say oh like they open up someone i thought oh they really don't open up someone but they open up people like it doesn't shy away from that kind of stuff that's my thoughts and feelings so far red flags are going off everywhere for samson it really is i don't it's just something about this guy i don't like that's all i have to say so far i will get it done tonight so i better get a wriggle on put this yoga mat away and continue reading i will update you when i have finished so i'll see you then it's like half past midnight now so it's January 9th, 
my birthday and the last day for Winterween. I just finished Follow Me to Ground. I don't think I like it. Like, I do and I don't. I looked at some of the praise that people have for this book. I don't see the praise for this book. I don't. I'm just very let down by this book and I'm finding it incredibly difficult to give it some sort of rating to understand my thoughts and feelings about it. I'm going to have to look at other people's reviews and I will come back with my own in the wrap-up, like the January wrap-up. I'll have... I'll hopefully fingers crossed have my own thoughts and feelings about it but it's just it's just fine for me like I don't know I'm so very confused like I don't I'd like to think I don't mind or or that I could possibly like a weird book this is like weird to the point where it's just like like do you even know what the story's about just uh this could have been so much more I'm just a little let down, which is really sad to say. Hopefully, Night of the Mannequins will be better. Will it be a two-star read or a three-star read or a five-star read? I don't think it'll be five stars. Definitely not. I don't think I will be giving Follow Me to Ground higher than a three. To me, it does not sit right with me giving this book higher than a three stars. Like, it doesn't even feel three-star worthy to me. It's just... Anyway, I'm going to go sleep. I'll check back in with you tomorrow. Night of the Mannequins is a shorter, so I should finish it tomorrow. Fingers crossed. And I'll see you tomorrow. Hiya, everyone. Um, it is now Sunday. It is the 9th of January, the last day for Winterween. As you can see, I'm like all dressed up, all pretty. Got a really beautiful necklace. Let me see if I can get closer up on it. Really, really beautiful necklace. I think it goes really nicely with this dress. I'm around like 20-ish pages into Night of the Mannequins. And I'm enjoying it so far. I like the background. Like we're getting like more background with the story. Like how they came across this mannequin. It all started off with a prank. So they wanted to prank this person in a movie theater by having this mannequin sitting in a movie theater. And just like have it like really creeping. Like really creepily just sitting there. But then it turns out everyone, just about everyone dies. So this mannequin like basically comes to life and starts killing everyone or slaughtering everyone. And I'm liking it. I'm liking the background with the characters with how they came across the mannequin. I think we are going to get into the prank very, very soon. I want to read a bit before my family come over. I'm going to try and read because I want to... Okay, because I think Dexter New Blood, the last episode, comes out tonight. I'm hoping tonight, if not tomorrow night. And then I want to listen to The Weeknd's new album. So I have to get a wriggle on with this reading. And I should at least get it finished tonight. I will update you. It's 100 pages long. I should fly through it pretty good. Even though there is actually more description. Like there's more paragraphs of description and thoughts like it's first person so we're getting like a first person perspective of this character that we're following and it is quite long the paragraphs with the descriptions and how they're doing the prank and all the history and backgrounds with the friends and all that kind of stuff so it is taking me a little longer to read you know how sometimes with reading a book there'll be like a little bit of a, a little bit of a space between them it's just like the wording is boom close like that instead of having that little bit of a page break not a page break, but like a little bit of a line spacing is what I meant to say. So that's why it's taking me so long to read just those few pages. I'm going to read now. I'll catch up with you and give you an update. Wrap up this vlog when I have finished reading Night of the Mannequins. I'll see you then. Okay, so coming up. I have just finished Night of the Mannequins and I don't like it. I don't like it. It's not for me. I fell asleep several times. I don't know if it's because I've had alcohol. And the I, like alcohol does mellow me out, but it doesn't really put me to sleep. And the fact that we are in a bit of a heat wave too. Probably that as well, just like the heat just sucking you out, sucking your energy out. The heat does, it's bad. We're in a heat wave. And it's terrible, like the humidity is so bad. Not enough mannequins for my liking it is a psychological horror and i can see where the psycholo 
like the psychological aspects of it where it come into play it just felt a little predictable for me like as soon as we heard or saw something or we were told something about a character and what they were doing i was like oh well this is a little predictable reading challenge this readathon has really really taken a big nose dive i'm not happy about it and i don't want it to put me in a reading slump i think it's also because of the fact that i really did not want to be reading these books i wanted to read other books yeah i'm just i'm a little disappointed by how this readathon went and I hope it hasn't put me in a bit of a reading slump. I will give Stephen Graham Jones another chance because I do think his fuller, like his actual novel books, like novel length books could really be for me. Just this one, no. This one needed to have had a lot more, it needed to be novel length, it needed to be novel length. I'm going to go now. I'm actually going to finish this up now. So Thank you for watching. Let me know, did you have any successes? If you've had, please let me know if you've had any good books because I really need to know if you've read any good books. The only good book was Stolen Tongues for me. I really, truly did like it. Yeah, more thoughts in my wrap-up. Keep an eye out for that. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.